Welcome to my 2024 Plan With Me video. My Plan With Me videos are part of my kind of festive traditions now. I always come back to create my Plan With Me video regardless of whether or not I am active on my YouTube channel. There is something so satisfying about setting up a new journal. I love the feeling of a brand new fresh start and I love an excuse to buy a new journal obviously. I don't showcase my journaling day to day with the YouTube channel because my journal experience is very personal but I like that with the plan with me I can kind of show the setup and what goes into it before I start filling out the details and it really starts to become fully my own. This year I am using a notebook therapy journal so this is my second notebook therapy journal that I've used. This one has kind of a whale theme um, so on the front is kind of a frame with a whale in it and it's surrounded by clouds and stars and a moon. It also has these holographic foil edges which I absolutely love. So I had holographic foil edges on my last journal and anytime I pulled out that journal I just had to admire the foil edges. I just couldn't resist looking at them every time I pulled out my journal and that is an indication that I may be obsessed with journals but it, it also shows that that journal was really beautiful and I will probably do the same thing with this journal this year. This one also has these little star uh, decorations on the side of the foil as well so it really ties in with that kind of dreamy feel. I'm really excited to use this journal, I've had it for about six months so I actually bought two journals together and I put it to a vote to see which people would vote for because I did like both obviously, I did buy both but the well one was kind of calling to me a little bit more and I was kind of disappointed when everyone voted for the other one but the benefit is that I can use this whale journal for the remainder of an entire year whereas the last one was a journal for just half a year. Which brings me to my next point, I really hope that this year's journaling experience is really simple and I just have the one journal for the year. As much as I love buying journals, I love the satisfaction of having one journal per year and the last two years I've had two journals. So in 2022 I had this big square journal and I was really excited to try out this square design. You know there would be a lot more room, um, it would shake up how I go about layouts because it was a different shape but the journal itself was so heavy and it just didn't feel that comfortable to get out of the drawer and use and it also got really covered in dust, the cover just seemed to accrue dust and it just didn't feel like a pleasant experience to use. So I ended up switching to the Compoco Yoga Cats journal design, which is what I've done a review on. I've done a review on that journal. It's such a pretty journal. I didn't show the setup that I did in that one, but I did love the journal itself. The cover is really pretty. I loved the rose foil edges, um, the rose gold edges. But what I noticed going from a journal which has thicker, almost card-like, interior pages to the Compoco journal is that the Compoco journal the pages felt really thin and it actually put me off doing certain designs in my journal because I was conscious that some of it would come through onto the other page. Now the ghosting was nowhere near as bad as the Leuchtturm journals but it was still enough to dissuade me from wanting to use that journal or that brand of journal um, again in the future as much as I love how the journals look you know I'm using them day to day I want to enjoy using them day to day so that made me decide to switch journal brands in 2023 and I ended up buying a notebook therapy journal um, the Tory Gates journal and that was the one I set up in 2023 the plan with me video it was one of my absolute favorite annual setups. I loved how it looked, I loved the red, I loved the quotes, I loved the gold embellishments, I loved everything about that setup, I was so happy with it. But the problem was is that I ran out of room in that journal so I opted for a B5 size thinking that 
it's just a little bit smaller but actually it just wasn't enough to keep me going throughout the year and I ran out of room so I had to buy another two journals obviously um, I couldn't just buy one um, so I ended up buying another journal to see me through the other half of the year and that is when I did my major plan with me if you've seen that so yeah I'm just really hoping that this year I just have the one journal as much as I love buying journals like I said I love the satisfaction of one journal feeling like it encompasses one year and also I'm gonna start to have a storage problem after years of journaling if I keep going you know one or two a year okay enough of me rambling about my journal buying habits let's move on to the actual setup so obviously I had to sign my name because there was a section to sign my name so it'd be very rude not to and then I moved on to the first page so this is the year overview page and I used a pale blue brush pen to write the 2024 out the problem I had is that I sketched out my designs in advance and the light blue pastel brush pen um, showed the pencil through it and I thought that maybe I could erase the pencil so this was kind of a test to see whether it's possible turns out you could not rub out the pencil afterwards so I had to kind of rub out the pencil in future setups and then try to remember where things were so it's kind of a shame because there's some instances with quotes where I had to rub out the pencil and then the sizing was just a bit off but I'll get to that later. So for the year overview page I almost got rid of this one because I didn't use it very much in 2023 though I don't think that was helped by the fact that I had two journals. This is a page where I add important dates throughout the year. This is not a place to add day-to-day this is just kind of important milestones so birthdays my wedding <laughs> um milestones such as that that I want to remember the date obviously you'd hope I would remember the date for my wedding but just in case I will add it to this page so when I set up my journals I always create the shell as it were and then I come back and fill it out so I don't fill this out yet I come back to it to fill it out Around the 2024, I add little star embellishments using a silver gel pen. So I like the simplicity of this decoration. Something I do is I grab some paper to sandwich between pages when I'm flipping over to a new page. And that's to try prevent the smudging from the gel pen because the gel pens are super sparkly and fun to use, but they are prone to smudging. So I make sure to have that paper in between each page. Moving on, I have my period tracker and self-care tracker. These are layouts that I use each year. They are my go-to, I always use them. I then fill out the headers using a silver gel pen again, just again to have that uh, pale blue and silver theme. And then I added the dates into the tracker. This took bloody ages. And actually the trackers are part of the reason why I procrastinate on my plan with me setups because it takes so long and this one I actually got hand cramps which is surprising obviously I'm a calligrapher I don't often get hand cramps but I think it was because I was writing so small so my hand was extra like tense when I was writing so I had to take little breaks in between to write out these dates and this is the first year in years that I have not made a mistake on the tracker even if I've sketched out in advance I seemed to always make a mistake somewhere maybe I just haven't noticed it if I have made a mistake please don't tell me I'd rather stay ignorant <laughs> because it took so long I didn't add any extra decoration to this page because it's already quite a full page the pen I used to fill out my trackers was this Pilot 0.4 gel pen it's one I got in Japan and you can see my full haul of pens that I got from Japan in a previous video but I am obsessed with this pen I use it every day and I'm actually really scared of it running out on me so I've ordered some refills so that I can use it again the size of the nib is also really satisfying to write with I like the small kind of style I create with it moving on I have my predictions page so this is something that I introduced last year and it's something that 
I hope I incorporate in future year journals. So I have a section dedicated to what I hope for in the year ahead and then a section for predictions, so what I actually think will happen in the year ahead. And then I have a page dedicated to what actually happened. So this kind of combines um, like optimism in the hoping for section, and then perhaps a little bit of uh, pessimism or realism in what I think will actually happen. And then the what happened is the reality, what actually did end up happening. and. I like this as kind of a reflection into my mindset of where I'm at at that time, what it is I want from my life and what is worrying me and what actually ended up happening in regards to those things. So I find this a really interesting spread. It also shows that sometimes yes negative things may happen as I thought they may but Often positive things happen that were unexpected and you can't always predict what is around the corner. In terms of decoration, I used the pale blue brush pen to create this cloud decoration. It's nice and simple to draw, which I love. And then I added just little star doodles around the clouds using my silver gel pen. Moving on, I have my memories at a glance page. So obviously I'm writing down everything that happens throughout the year in my journals, but memories at a glance is just a way for me to quickly see kind of core memories for me throughout the year. And it's a nice way for me to reflect back on things that I have enjoyed throughout the year as well. In terms of decoration, I once again used the kind of cloud design. This is really simple to create, but it looks really nice and soft with this pastel blue brush pen. I then added in the silver stars again, and this just adds to the dreamy feel of the setup. The next page I have the I'd like to page. So this is a place for me to write down things that are on my mind that kind of nag at me or oh, I'd really like to start running again um said no one ever um I'd really like to play that game I've been wanting to play for ages or I'd really like to do this or that it's just a place for me to write down things that are on my mind then on the other page I had a quote page and the layout was lovely when I did it in pencil but as soon as I got rid of the pencil it became a lot more challenging. And something else that I hadn't quite considered is the brush pen I was using was the Ecoline brush pens, which are of course chunkier. I don't know why I didn't consider this. I thought I would get away with it, but I didn't. So it ended up being quite squished, which is a shame. Um, but the quote says, our dreams illuminate the darkness like stars, the night sky. And I kind of liked the tie-in between stars um, and dreams and just kind of adding to that dreaminess of the theme I'm going for. The next couple of pages are the I did it pages. So these are pages for me to celebrate wins. And I think these pages are really important because it's important to celebrate any wins you make in your business or personal life. And when you run a business, it's very easy to focus on what's next. Okay, I've done that, what next? And sometimes you forget to take note of actual achievements. So I made this a double page spread. I wrote, I did it on the left-hand page. And then I wrote, I also did this on the second page. And then I didn't add any extra decoration for that one, I left it as is. On the next page, we have another quote page. It says, our goals illuminate an ocean of possibilities. So this kind of ties in with the whale on the front. And I did a better job of making it look consistent and not squish. So I was much happier with this quote than the first one. On the next page, I have my overall goals. Um, so I just wrote goals 2024, and I will turn this into a mind map of goals for the year. Something I also like to do is I like to break down goals and quarterly goals. So for the quarterly goals layouts, I did a little cloud doodle for the center and then I wrote the relevant quarter in the middle. 
So what I like to do is use the top half of the page to kind of mind map out ideas I have for goals for that quarter ahead. And then in the bottom section, I'll write down a few goals that I've decided to actively work on. So again, I'm using my silver gel pen to set that up and decorate it as well. The silver gel pen could actually be quite challenging to work with at times because it's so prone to smudging. If I use it and then had to move around it to do something else, it was a bit of a nightmare. Okay, moving on, we have my biz diary. So I write down what's going on in my business and how I'm feeling about my business and perhaps dreams and goals that I have. But this is mainly kind of my reflection on how my business is going each month and I break it down per quarter. I'm using the brush pen again to create the header and then instead of using the brush pen for the dots of the eyes, I use a silver gel pen to create stars. The final pages of my journal are my anxiety logs. So these are something I've been using for a while. So the first column is what am I worried about? The second column is what can I do? And the third column is what happened. So again, it's a way for me to reflect on things that are worrying me and write down the reality of what happened. And sometimes I find that really comforting to look back and think, okay, something that was worrying me ended up absolutely fine. And try to kind of reiterate that idea that actually things tend to work out okay. But it's a way for me to also process my worries because the what can I do section helps me feel more in control because I can more proactively think about ways to reduce my nerves. So the layout, I use the brush pen for the header and then I create a little star embellishment on each side of the header. And then I'm using the silver gel pen for kind of the columns. And then I'm using my black pilot pen to fill out the headers. I kind of wish I'd used a silver one for this, but it's it's fine. Okay, so now I'm going back and actually filling out my journal. So adding a few key dates in for the uh, overview page. And it's kind of hard for you to see what I'm writing because of the reflection. So this time I'm using a silver pilot pen. So it's a similar size to the black pen I've been using. Um, so it's a 0.4 tip, I believe. Um, but it's at an angle you can see it very clearly. It was definitely clearer for me from a writing perspective from the angle I was at. Moving on, I am filling out my predictions page. So in the first section of what I'm hoping for, the first thing I wrote was stress-free wedding. And obviously that's something everyone hopes for. My wedding planning experience has been far from stress-free so far. So I'm really hoping the rest is smooth sailing, but we will see. And then the second point I wrote is that I would like for more members in my memberships. So these are something I've been working really hard on. They are my business memberships for artists. And I just really want more people to be able to utilize them and for me to grow my community there. And then the third point I wrote is to have a nice 30th birthday because I am hitting that milestone in 2024. I didn't write out the predictions on camera because sometimes I like to give my more candid opinions of what might happen in my life in that section and I don't necessarily want that on camera so we'll leave that blank for now. And then in the I'd like to section I wrote I'd like to start Ring Fit Adventure again. So for those that don't know Ring Fit Adventure is a game on Nintendo Switch, but it incorporates exercise and I found it kind of a fun way to exercise, but I haven't bought it out in ages and it's just sitting there and it's something I should definitely utilize in the winter months when I'm not going outside as often. The next thing I wrote is I would like to have a holiday abroad. I am definitely not someone that goes on holidays all the time. I was very, very lucky to go to Japan earlier this year, but I am not someone that's been on holiday very often, so I would still like a holiday abroad. I imagine this will happen uh, in my honeymoon. So yeah, that will probably be accomplished, but it's still something I would like to do so I've added it to my I'd like to page. 
And then the third point I've mentioned is that I would like to start watercolour painting again. So there was a phase, I think it was last year or the year before, where I was non-stop watercolour painting. I absolutely loved it. Don't get me wrong, I cannot like paint anything proper, but I just loved the satisfaction of playing with colour and just essentially doodling or painting random stuff onto a piece of paper. I just found it so satisfying and I would like to do more of it in 2024 because I found that really relaxing. And as much as I like calligraphy, I definitely associate it with my business. So it doesn't have the same feeling of re relaxation as it did before, whereas watercolour definitely lets me get creative, but I don't associate it with business. Moving on to my annual goals, I actually didn't have a clear idea of what I wanted to do in 2024, which was quite interesting. Normally I'm super goals driven, um, so I kind of just let what came to my head come up. So the first goal I wrote down is no new courses in quarter one and two. So I love creating things for my business. I love creating new courses. I love coming up with ideas, but the problem is that I love creating so much that actually I would end up creating more than marketing. So this year I am focusing more on the marketing side of my business before I add anything new to market to it. The next goal I put is to complete my Audible library. So I got hooked in Audible's uh, free credit trial. So you get one credit to try and I thought, haha suckers, I'm not signing up for your membership. I'm just going to use this one credit. I bought the longest book I could find. I think it was um, Stephen King's It. So I think it was something like 55 hours of contents. I ended up absolutely loving using it and I have listened to audiobooks in the past but I ended up subscribing to Audible and that was in 2021 so my library has gotten bigger and bigger especially as they often do the three pound deals or find books in there but I think I have something like 60 audiobooks now something along those lines. I definitely have a lot of audiobooks and I tend to buy them quicker than I can listen to them. So this year I have set a goal to complete my Audible library because one, I like listening to audiobooks and two, it might just make me from buying it even more before I listen to them because I want the satisfaction of completing listening to all of them. Now there have been some books in the past where I'm just really not getting into them so what I'll do is I'll give each book at least a couple of hours. If I still can't get into it, then I'll allow that as kind of a, a check or um, yeah, like a pass in this goal. But overall, I want to listen to as many books in my library as I can. The next goal was to bake some cookies. So this one was actually inspired by my friend baking some cookies. Um, the cookies were really good, but also um, it just made me want to try bake something. I am definitely not much of a baker. I don't anticipate myself becoming um, a master baker, but I just wanted something fun and achievable on my goals list. And I want to try bake some of my own cookies because I don't think I've done that before. So we'll see how that goes. The next goal I have is to launch an ad for one of my memberships. So I want to launch a Facebook ad and try to get more members into that. So that is more of a business focused one. The next goal is to host Galentine's again. So in 2023, I hosted a Galentine's movie night and I'm one of those people that moan about not doing anything socially but then when it comes to potentially doing anything social I don't want to go um so this year I tried to take a proactive step and I actually hosted so I hosted a movie night with some friends that I have they were friends from different areas of my life as well so it's quite nice to bring some of those together and they came around we watched a movie we ate chocolate and it was fun so I want to do that again in 2024 
The next goal I have is to create a bundle with other artists. So I really want to collaborate in 2024. I actually had a huge goal for 2024 that I had in mind and then I realised that I would burn out within a couple of weeks so I decided to not include that one. But creating a bundle is a fun way for me to collaborate with other people and I can do it more at my own pace and at the own size that I want to. The final goal I had was to host a barbecue. So again, another social kind of focus goal. I really wanted to host a barbecue in 2023 because we are often hosted at other people's barbecues and this year I really wanted to do it, but we had no summer this year. It was a really bad summer in the UK. I think we had two weeks of sun maximum, which sounds like plenty of time to host a barbecue, but we kept assuming that the sun would come back and it didn't. So in 2024, I would really like to do that. Oh no, I did add an extra goal. So create 50 watercolor paintings. So that is a tangible goal for me to start creating watercolor paintings again. And I decided to add a number to it to give some tangibility to this goal. Otherwise, you know, I might pull out the watercolor painting once and just spend 30 minutes doing it and then not touch it again. I really wanted something to encourage me to get back into that habit of doing something that I found really fun. So I apologize that these goals are hard to see from your perspective, but I hope me reading them out helped. Something I found really interesting is that a lot of my goals were more personal, whereas in previous years, they've definitely been far more business orientated. I have found that my business has kind of dominated my life over the last couple of years and I've been really trying to focus more on the personal side of my life in the last year or so so maybe that is why the goals I've come up with definitely have that more personal element to them. Moving on to the first quarter's goals I wrote host Galentine's nights, book my wedding vendors, create bundle offer bake some cookies, celebrate 30th birthday, and play Spyro 3. So I was obsessed with Spyro 3 as a child, but then we lost the disc and I just didn't play it again. But I have it on the Switch now, so I want to actually sit down and play games. So something I find really interesting about video games is that I always say to myself that I don't have the time to play, and yet I will sit down and play cooperative, multiplayer games and I can spend hours on those but there's something about playing a video game by yourself it's a different experience and I want to focus more on using video games as downtime just for me as well. I found it interesting I had to keep flicking back between quarter one and my annual goals because I actually wasn't sure what I wanted to do at first and it's just such a change from me usually. I normally have far too many ideas of what I want to do. So I'm hoping this is a bit more of a relaxed year. So the three goals I focused on for quarter one were celebrating my 30th birthday, book wedding vendors, and create a bundle offer with other artists. But even since uh, writing out my plan with me, I've kind of changed my mind on that being a quarter one goal. I have quite a busy couple of months ahead. Um, so I kind of want that bundle offer to not be as time restrictive. I want to create something that I'm really confident with and happy with. It's not something I want to rush. Okay, so that was my 2024 setup. I'm really happy with it. I appreciate it's not that hard to see um, the prettiness of the silver via video, but it's just shimmery and light and it has that dreamy feel that I was aiming for, so I am happy with the setup for this year. And surprisingly, not much went wrong, usually I have something go wrong in the actual setup of the year, but it all went smoothly, which is a surprise. So what I would like you to do before you head off and watch more Plan With Me videos, if you would like me and like to watch 20 Plan With Me videos in one afternoon, is to let me know down below what your focus for the year is. Are you focusing more on personal or business or work? What is it that's really driving you for the year ahead? Whatever it is, I hope it makes you happy and fulfilled 
and that it is a good one for you. I hope I post to my YouTube channel more in 2024, but if not, I will see you for my 2025 plan with me. Oh gosh, that sounds like such a big number. But yeah, I will see you later. Bye.